loves to tantalise its audience, whether it's with a mind-blowing twist, the identity of the killer, or a last-minute reveal. Even though moviegoers enjoy an unexpected turn, it seems like these films didn't just throw us a curveball, they deceived us. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 horror movie moments everyone was waiting for but never happened. Number 10. The Newborn in Rosemary's Baby Rosemary's Baby begins with the titular character and her husband moving to an apartment, hoping to start a family. After Rosemary falls pregnant, she feels like everything is working out perfectly. But after a series of disturbing events, Rosemary suspects her neighbours intend to harm her unborn child. Little does she know that the tenant's true intentions are far more disturbing. Just before she comes to term, Rosemary discovers the residents in her building are Satanists. Not only that, they intend to worship Rosemary, believing she is carrying Satan's offspring. After she gives birth, Rosemary gazes at the baby, clutching her face in horror. Although we never see the child, Mia Farrow's haunting expression conveys what she is looking at is not of this world. According to producer William Castle, the scene was supposed to depict the child as a monstrous demon. Director Roman Polanski vetoed this idea, however, believing the scene would be more powerful if left ambiguous. Even though it was disappointing not to see Rosemary's baby, it was the right move. Because the whole story had built up to this moment, it would have been a shame to ruin it with a shot of a baby in unconvincing makeup. Number 9. No showdown with the main villain in The Invisible Man in The Invisible Man, Cecilia has grown tired of being abused by her partner, Adrian Griffin, which encourages her to leave him. When Adrian seemingly takes his life soon after, Cecilia feels like she can finally be at peace. But after Cecilia and her friends are attacked by an unseen force, she realises Adrian is pursuing her while wearing a light-cancelling suit that renders him invisible. No one believes Cecilia, causing her to become alienated from her friends and eventually locked up in a psychiatric ward. When her invisible stalker comes for Cecilia, she kills him and tears off his mask. To Cecilia's confusion, she discovers her tormentor is Adrian's brother, Tom. When the police storm Adrian's home, they find him alive, claiming he has been held prisoner by his sibling. Although the cops accept this explanation, Cecilia is convinced the Griffin brothers took turns stalking her while wearing the cloak device. Pretending to take Adrian back, Cecilia agrees to have dinner with him. Using the invisibility suit she stole earlier, Cecilia slits Adrian's throat, making his death look like a suicide. Although Cecilia battles an invisible man in the climax, there's no such showdown with Adrian, which is odd considering he's the main antagonist. Number 8. Turn on the Oven in The Visit the visit opens with teenage siblings Becca and Tyler heading to Philadelphia to stay with their grandparents, who they've never met. Although Becca thinks her nana and Pop Pop are pleasant at first, she gets worried when they start acting increasingly volatile. So when Nana asks Becca to get inside the oven to clean it, she's understandably cautious. Although the viewer suspects Nana will do something sinister, the scene ends with Becca unharmed. However, any horror fan will suspect this oven scene was mere foreshadowing. And sure enough, Nana asks Becca to clean the oven from the inside once again during the climax. By this point, we all already know that the elderly couple are simply posing as the kids' grandparents and intend the children harm. Because of this, viewers are certain Nana will switch on the oven while Becca is inside so she can roast her alive. So when Nana slams the oven door shut while Becca is inside, you assume she'll turn up the heat. Instead, she cleans the exterior before letting Becca out. Because the director had no intention of giving this moment any payoff, you have to wonder why he set it up, not once, but twice. Number 7. The Monsters in Bird Box Bird Box follows a woman called Mallory surviving in a post-apocalyptic world infested with interdimensional creatures. Making eye contact with these monsters compels people to take their lives, forcing Mallory and her party to wear blindfolds. Now, the idea that an entity can make you kill yourself by looking at it is such a horrifying idea, many checked out Bird Box purely to see what these entities looked like. It's probably why Bird Box became the most viewed film in Netflix history at the time. When the credits rolled 124 minutes later, viewers were saddened to learn the monsters never showed up. Like Rosemary's baby, you might assume the filmmakers didn't show the beast so their appearance can be left to interpretation. But the real reason we didn't see the monsters is simple. They looked terrible. During filming, Sandra Bullock shot a scene with an animatronic which served as the monster. According to the film's lead star, the creature looked like a green man with a horrific baby face. Because these nebulous entities came across as unintentionally funny, the filmmakers decided to scrap the design entirely. Even though viewers were annoyed they never saw the monsters, they would have been even more annoyed if they did. Number 6. Brahms Comes to Life in The Boy in The Boy, a nanny called Greta is hired by an eccentric couple to care for a porcelain doll, who the parents keep as a way to grieve for their son, Brahms. As bizarre as the circumstances are, Greta is desperate for a job and so agrees to look after the child. As time goes by, Greta hears strange noises in the house and notices objects having been moved even when she's alone. When Greta sees the doll has been placed in a manner different to how she left it, she suspects it's possessed by Brahms' soul. As Greta bears witness to more bizarre occurrences, there is little doubt in her mind, as well as the viewer, that the doll 
is a lie. Which is why it's so shocking when you learn it isn't. In the climax, it's revealed that Brahms has been living within the walls of his home for decades and has been taunting Greta since she arrived. Because the boy's premise sounds suspiciously similar to Child's Play or Annabelle, viewers expect a similar payoff, which is why they are left blindsided by this twist. Number 5. The Buzzsaw in Army of the Dead Army of the Dead has an infuriating habit of teasing an intriguing subplot but never expanding on it. When we learn some zombies are robots, we assume there will be some big reveal at the end, and sadly, there's no payoff. One character mentions how inactive zombies come back to life if exposed to rain. Although viewers expect this piece of exposition to be important, it's never mentioned again. Halfway through the movie, we discover the undead are procreating, making them far more dangerous. Once again, this plot thread goes nowhere. Also, there's UFOs in the opening scene, no idea why. But none of these potential narratives have less payoff than Van der Rohe's buzzsaw. Because Van der Rohe keeps bragging about his pride and joy, you assume this custom-built deathblade will massacre a legion of flesh-eaten husks during the showdown. Instead, this buzzsaw is used one time to cut a hole in a wall. Even though we were promised the ultimate zombie weapon for over two hours, the buzzsaw doesn't kill a single zombie. Not only is this anticlimactic, it's downright confusing. Why did the filmmakers incorporate this weapon in the first place if they had no intentions of using it? Number 4. The Full Moon in The Wolfman There are certain movies that are so iconic you pretty much know the whole story even if you've never seen them. Everyone knows Planet of the Apes takes place on Earth, Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father and the Titanic sinks long before they watch these films. If you've never gotten around to checking out The Wolfman, there's one thing you would bet your bottom dollar on. The main character transforms into a werewolf during a full moon. But if you watch this 1941 classic, you'll be amazed to see no such scene exists. In fact, there isn't a single shot of the moon. The reason why the full moon isn't depicted in The Wolfman, despite being a staple in the lore is simple. It wasn't a part of the mythology at the time. Instead, our protagonist Larry Talbot becomes the Wolfman at certain times of the year when the wolfbane blooms and the autumn moon is bright. In the sequel, the mythology was revised, so Talbot turned into a werewolf when the moon is full and bright. Number 3. Elizabeth discovers the truth in Alien Covenant it's no secret the Alien franchise has been a downward spiral for decades. Nevertheless, sci-fi fans couldn't help getting excited for the 2012 prequel Prometheus. Not only was the original director Ridley Scott helming the project, Prometheus would finally reveal the origin of the Xenomorphs. Or so we believed. Two hours later, viewers were left with more questions than answers. Like, a lot of questions. But there was still a glimmer of hope. In the film's closing moments, our heroine Elizabeth Shaw ventures into space to find the home planet of the Engineers, the extraterrestrials who supposedly created the Xenomorphs. Because Prometheus is infamous for its plot holes, you'd think Ridley Scott would bend over backwards to ensure all the story arcs tied up neatly in the sequel, Alien Covenant. Instead, the plot was left more muddied than ever. Rather than focusing on Elizabeth Shaw's character, it's casually explained that she died in a crash after she reached the Engineer's world. Because Prometheus left a nasty taste in our mouth, a lot of people watched this sequel just to get some closure. But since Elizabeth never makes an appearance, except as a dismembered corpse, Covenant left viewers more disappointed than Prometheus did. Number 2. Who's Billy in Black Christmas? In Black Christmas, Jess and her sorority sisters are having a party when they receive an obscene phone call from someone called Billy. At first, the teens assumed the caller is a random prankster, but after people in the house and the neighborhood wound up dead, Jess realizes Billy is a serial killer. Because Jess's partner Peter disappears when these phone calls happen, it's heavily implied that he is Billy. This theory is validated further when Jess discovers the phone calls are being made in the house, meaning the killer has been among Jess and her friends the whole time. Concluding her boyfriend must be the killer, Jess strikes Peter with a fire poke killing him. As the police put Jess to bed, it seems like the story is ready to wrap up, but in the film's closing moments, we hear a voice from the attic proving Billy is still there. Although viewers naturally expected some big twist about Billy's true identity, it never happens. We never learn who he is, why he lives in this house, or why he preyed on these women. Apart from a single shot of his eye, we never see what he looks like. Number 1. There's too many to list in the Halloween franchise. Although slasher fans were pumped to see the final installment in the Halloween series, many were outraged by how anticlimactic Halloween Ends was. However, one must remember John Carpenter's franchise has always been associated with disappointment due to its lack of payoffs. This all started with the third entry Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Based on the title, many assumed it was another sequel revolving around Michael Myers murdering the residents of Haddonfield. Only upon watching a threequel did viewers realise Michael wasn't even in it. In Halloween 4's climax, Michael's niece, Jamie, 
stabs her foster mother the same way Michael stabbed his sister when he was a child, hinting she's been corrupted by her evil uncle. Although this scene implies Jamie will become a serial killer, this plot point is dropped in Halloween 5. Halloween 5 also introduces the Man in Black, a cult leader who makes Michael kill to give his disciples power. Once again, this subplot is absent from Halloween 6, but does appear in the director's cut. Which brings us to David Gordon Green's recent Halloween trilogy. Although 2018's Halloween was everything fans could have dreamed of, the follow-ups sucked. Even though many expected Laurie Strode and Michael would have a rematch in Halloween Kills, the pair never meet. Fans were left so pissed off, you'd expect Green would make sure the finale would give viewers what they wanted. To the dismay of everyone, Michael Myers was barely in Halloween Ends. Because the franchise has disappointed fans so many times, it makes you wonder why viewers were surprised the recent installment was a letdown. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.